Hey guys, all right? It's a... Brett from Iron Body Martial Arts here. How's it going? Fix up the hair. Here we go. It's as good as it'll ever get. Um, I hope you guys are doing all right. Again, thank you to all the people who support the channel, Patreon, uh, and the guys who uh, are on the Iron Body Martial Arts Iron Hand course, which you can find a link down to below if you're interested. Um, lots of all those topics are on my channel, so you can go on them and trawl through the channel. But if you want something super structured, you can go to that, and it's in easy chunks for you. Um, okay, uh, good to see everyone. I'm just doing a bit of a live stream here. Um, gonna go through some channel comments because um, uh, I've been really busy uh, with work and stuff, moved, uh, moved station. Uh, there's loads of channel comments, some, some good funny comments, some interesting points uh, on some videos that I've done recently. Um, so, so yeah, I'm gonna go through these, have a chat. Um, maybe some of the guys will appear on here. Um, ask some questions about training, about whatever, about topics. I'm just gonna go through it, probably not too long. Well, I, I do say that sometimes, but um, yeah, I do say that sometimes, but we end, up, we end up going on longer sometimes. Oh man, I need to sort my hair out. Might just have to put my hat on. Hmm. All right, so let's get started. Um, yeah, let's get started here. Um, so we've got Jim Baker, uh, about 15 hours ago. He went on the um, uh, on my Iron Palm Fist Training Sand Bucket Method uh, video. Uh, and he says, will this help me develop calloused hands? Um, so yeah, obviously anyone, anyone, on, uh, anyone who's come on can chuck questions up or whatever. Uh, that's all right. So will, will the sand, will the red palm sand training help you develop calloused hands? Um, I guess, yeah, it will, it will develop your calloused hands uh, for Jim Baker. But an interesting thing that red sand palm does is initially, especially so if you train it with other things like gravel, although it's not the same technique, but initially you'll get calluses um, when you train red sand palm. Um, but then, then your skin will go soft again after a, 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 lo a longer period of time, which is strange. And then your softer skin is just as hard or just as strong as your calloused skin, even though it's soft. Doesn't make sense. How that works, who knows, but it does. Um, I remember that also specifically with my gravel training. Um, so I was doing gravel training as well with the little gravel beads, same thing. Uh, and yeah, the hands would get really calloused, uh, and then, yeah, and then it would, then, then after a longer period of time, they would get smoother, so it's pretty crazy. All right, so cool, thanks for that, Jim Baker. So the Bruce Lee video that we did, yeah, thanks, someone gave it a thumbs up. The Bruce Lee video that we did, um, which was quite a big topic out there, which was the, dr um, the drug, oh man, my hair's so bad. Oh, well, there we go, it's gone. Um, the, the, the story of Bruce Lee's long-term drug use. So I did a bit of a live stream on that when we just chatted about it, and Jason Master, someone here on, on that video, there'll be quite a few comments on that video. Someone here on that video said, Bruce Lee died because he was on drugs. I agree with this guy. So I'm not sure whether he was replying to me or another person commenting, um, because, I mean, I wasn't saying I, Bruce Lee died because of drugs, but I was, I was suggesting maybe, maybe that's what happened. Um, or maybe it assisted it, I don't know. But yeah, good points by Jason there. Uh, Steve, um, as well, has made a comment on that Bruce Lee video. Uh, could this be the reason uh, he died at an early age? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're, if you're using a lot of different kinds of drugs and performance enhancing drugs, uh, and you're also an athlete, and you're pushing it to the max, like Bruce Lee was you know, known for, or purported to do, um, and you also had that kind of Hollywood lifestyle, you know, burning the candle at both ends. Maybe, yeah, sad, but, but maybe, yeah. So, so that's two from that video. Um, one comment from an older video, an older series I did, which was my two cents training tips, static hold training an iron bridge. Um, so this is, that video is about static, the static holding of postures and static qi gong. Yeah, so, so basically, you, all, you got um, like um, the Ba, the ba Dua Jin, 
um, which is the eight pieces of the brocade, are, um, are standing postures, oh, the cat's here, are standing postures um, that, that you use to train like qigong, your tendons, whatever. They're standing postures. You might, you guys probably might, you might know them, you know, you've got like the, the, the suspending the cauldron, you know, pushing the gates, raising the sky, uh, pushing palms to the side, whatever you want to call them different, differently. You've got the separate hands and that goes with leg positions. Um, but uh, usually you train them with movements. Um, yeah, you've got the bow arrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you've also got the, uh, what's it called in the 72 secret arts of the um, Shaolin, the, the eight, is it the four part exercise? Yeah, I forget them. But anyway, it's similar, it's similar. Um, so you've got basically moving through those Tai Chi movements or Qigong movements, but you've also got standing statically in them. Um, so that's what that video is about. Um, so in other words, you hold the postures and you breathe in and out of them um, and you, you notice the tension that you, you get tension in your tendons uh, and, your, and your skeletal system just from holding the postures and breathing. Yeah, um, and that's uh, there's a famous Shaolin tutor who's uh, who said uh, who said notice uh, who said notice um, uh, notice the movement in the stillness when you train um, Qi Gung or Yang is it is it Yang style Qi Gung or whatever whatever the Shaolin um, no sorry Yang style Tai Chi um, whatever the Shaolin form the original form. Um, but anyway, when, stat when doing any of these postures, notice the stillness, uh, the, sorry, the movement within the stillness. And many people think this is magical chi or whatever. But in the simplest terms, when you hold these static postures and you breathe through them, you can really feel the tension in the tendon system, the rubbing. Yeah, eventually it turns into like rubbing. And, and in China, they'd say like you get tingling in your hands and that's chi in your hands. Or well, it's, it's, it's just the... It's the tendon system, yeah, and stuff like that. So you're training it, that means you're training it correctly. Um, so that was what that video was about. Um, and yeah, someone's just come on here and said they recognize those from the eight pieces of brocade. Nick Forbes, I recognize. And yeah, well, there we go, Nick. So a great set. So with your eight pieces of brocade, um, you know, everyone moves through them or worries about moving through them, but also train them static, yeah? Um, you probably do anyway, so it's it's a bit strange, but you know, um, you know, uh, so, uh, suspend the cauldron. Uh, is that in there? Possibly not. But suspend the cauldron, hold it, breathe, breathe into the position, push forward, breathe, push to the side, breathe. Um, bow arrow, push, stand, breathe three, four, five times in and out of the static posture. Yeah, same. And don't forget the legs are important. You have to do the legs. Raising the sky, lots of people breathe in and out through that. It just really gives your body time to acclimatize to the um, postures and get the benefits of them. So, But this is probably all stuff you guys know. Like everyone who trains these things would probably know this. Um, or we'll give it a try. Maybe it's different. Maybe you only ever move through them nice and fluid. So try them static. Push, push. Push, static, breathe seven times or four times or whatever your time, your one is, push forward. Uh, maintaining good po uh, posture so that you lock all the, you know, the tendons and everything, good, good, uh, uh, good alignment. Um, and yeah, try them and remember the legs as well. Yeah, the legs are important. But anyway, I digressed. So, El Don Ca Canadinis, however you say that, on that video, said, what's your opinion on the body blade? Have you tried, um, ah, Sensei Emmett, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, what's, the, what's the opinion on the body blade? Have you tried body, body by science by Doug McDuff? Both build a type of static strength. Um, well, I've got my computer in front of me here. So what is it called? Body blade. Let's have a look what body blade is. I don't know what body blade is. Body blade. Body blade. What is this? Body blade exercises. Let's see what these are. Body blade power. Superpower. Body blade. 
how it works. How does body blade work? Are you ready to learn how to master the oh. market? No, we don't well, care about the market. Hello, my name is Bruce Heinesen. Body blade. I'm a physical therapist and I've been practicing since 1977. In 1991, I created body blade for my shoulder patients and my spinal patients. Come on, Bruce, tell us what the body blade is. A better environment for their healing, for their flexibility. So it looks like a stick. Oh, is it a bendy stick? What I did was I took the power of vibration and inertia. Oh, you wobble stick. Forces together to create an oscillating device that rapidly contract the muscles in your body. Oh, that's interesting. First, to go very deep in the core. The smallest multiplicity's muscles. Okay, in let's see this body blade thing working. Come on, look at the body blade. Oh yeah, that's a vibration and inertia. Oh, that's interesting. Use Newton's laws of inertia to Okay. Yeah. So there we go, body blade. It's like a it's like a big long stick that you wobble. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, um, there was a there there's an there's an old Chi there's an old Japanese and Chinese. It's a bit silly, but there's an old Chinese training method where you carry you carry bucket like a you carry a bucket two buckets of water on um, on a rattan stick, you know, or a, a stick, and you walk with it. Uh, and as you walk with it, you kind of tr you, you use the inertia momentum of the stick bending and the buckets. It can be buckets of stones to sort of um, train the elastic potential energy in your tendons. So that's an interesting one. Um, I don't know what body science is by Doug McDuff. Both build a kind of static strength. Well, I, I'd say the body blade for El Don Candelanes, who commented on that video, isn't it's not really a static strength. It's kind of like a vibratory strength. So in Kung Fu or martial arts, we would probably liken that to what we call Ging. You know, Ging is, you guys know Ging. Uh, ging is a power, you know, like this, this twitch power that you have, you know, in a short range, Ging, that's Ging. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be, um, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be just your fist, you know, your whole, your whole body can have ging, you know, compression, torsion, um, yeah, so, no, it's a, it's an interesting comment by El Don Candanines, so, if anyone's interested, have a look at this body blade thing, it's basically a wobble stick, um, you probably don't need to buy that wobble stick, just go and buy yourself a piece of rattan staff, um, rattan staffs cost next to nothing. You can wobble the hell out of those. And in fact, actually, there is another kind of training like that, which is, um, where is my rattan staff? But um, uh, people, uh, Wing Chun people would know, when you're training the, and spear, anyone who trains the Kung Fu spear, where you, you, ging, you ging the spear um, and you use it to train the tendons. Um, actually, probably do it with this, but it's usually with a, oh, hit my phone. it's usually with a, uh, it's usually with a bendy stick, but it's, it's where you gain something like a spool, yeah, and you use it to train, use it to sort of get these tendons, this torsion in these tendons, boom, yeah, you gain something tall with a long end, and you just try and whip the end of it, yeah, that's an example of it. And you feel it on your tendons. Um, and I suppose it translates to, you know, movements, good movements, like, you know, with this and, and power in the tendons. But anyway, as usual, I'm digressing terribly. Uh, we got some thumbs up there. So, who, any comments here? Um, I don't know. Nick Forbes says, I see what you mean. Thanks for the other. Uh, uh, Cedric. Justin A. Alcosba says, what do you think about Salat? Well, Salat, oh, Salat's, Salat's an interesting and awesome martial art. I, per se, I don't know too much about Salat, but having watched Salat, and, and obviously I do know some about Salat, um, I, I do know that a lot of Chinese, a lot of Chinese um, have had to escape China at various stages. And Salat is pretty much... Um, an old form of Kung Fu mixed with whatever the Indonesians were doing. 
uh, if it's the Indonesians, I'm can't, I hope I'm right there, but um, whoever those, the people of that area were, were training. So, so a, lot of, a lot of it is, is uh, it'll be a particular style of Kung Fu and it's very reminiscent of a lot of Kung Fu. Uh, some awesome stuff, some awesome movements. Um, and, and I think that Penan, Penan Tukan, I think, is that the same? Have I said it right? Penan, tu, Penan Tukan. I think that's the same as like Salat and the knife fighting and, and the flow, uh, this is flow drills and, and stuff like that. And, and there were a lot of awesome concepts in um, Penan Tukan and that kind of martial art that I've seen in higher levels of Jiu Jitsu and other martial arts, like, you know, like feeling, um, distance timing rhythm catching the rhythm of an opponent and etc etc stuff like that um yeah yeah okay so yeah that was a cool question there all right next question on oh, this one's again on the iron palm uh the fist tr sand bucket training so that's the red that's shaolin red sand palm uh, which you train that's a video i did on that it's quite a popular one for my channel anyway, because none of my videos are that popular, which you train obviously by striking into sand and gripping and twisting and stuff like that. So, um, jo Yoni, I Yoni Ireng has said, do we use harsher sand as we progress in the trainings? Um, and no, Yoni, you don't have to use harsher sand. If you want to do red sand palm, you can just strike into sand um, but you can change up the sand for iron sand if you're really crazy, um, which is basically like powdered iron filings, but you don't even have to do that. Or you can mix the iron powdered filings with the sand um, to make it a bit better, but it'll usually separate out. So just know, just strike your sand, do the things into your sand, and then you can add some gravel into the sand, some peas, um, some mung beans is good into the sand um, because the mung beans... Uh, are good for the iron palm training. It's, they're the first thing you train on and they've got a chemical in that's meant to be good. Um, but also some people even chuck chilies and stuff in there. And you might think, well, why the hell would you put chilies in your iron palm bag or your red palm sand bag? Uh, and that's because the, the habanero or the capsicum and the chili like promotes blood flow in the skin, uh, in that body. So as you're striking into it, it's just keeping the blood flow going in your fingers um, and your hands and it's keeping the, the body working nicely. So little tricks there. So there's that's one for Yoni uh, Irang. If, if he ever sees this, he probably won't. Um, I did a video, I BMA training update MMA and traditional skills. Uh, and someone said, uh, so that was a video about how, you know, I was finding, uh, I was training at a um, MMA club in Perth and I was finding how the traditional stuff was really helping out the stances, um, the stances and stuff that everyone usually trashes on were awesome for wrestling um, and awesome for ground defense uh, of, uh, what do you call it, felling defense. Um, and also for like jujitsu and stuff, when you were grappling people on the ground, you could stand up into a nice wide stance, have a nice wide base, and you could use it to lift people up or not be pulled into with their guard where they would twist you up or pulled into an armbar. You could just stand up in a wide stance or in like a bow arrow stance and you could literally just not, I'm not, not always forcefully pull out of what they were doing, but, um, but yeah, if you've got, yeah, if you've got stability and you can, you can do wide stances and maintain a strong base, it was giving you like an extra axis of movement because a lot of people it's standing or it's on the ground. It's upright, slightly bent over, then you fall over. But if you've got this upright and then you've got this low posture where you can maintain low postures on the ground, it's great for striking down. It's great for doing a lot of stuff. So um, yeah, and anyway, uh, on that video, uh, MMC Crownus says you might include true boxing stance guy stuff also. Um, true boxing stance guy. I don't know who that is. Let's find him. Uh, let's find him. True boxing stance it's probably an awesome youtube channel way better than my one uh true boxes stance 